don't bow. And immediately I started thinking about the teaching on Tate. Because Tate, we have the opportunity to either bow to God or we bow to our flesh. And the desires of our flesh will lead demonic oppression in our lives, which I'm going to explain to most of you. How, anybody here new for the first time? First time. Okay, so you'll understand what the Hebrew um, Tate is, the number nine in the alphabet, the Hebrew alphabet. So you'll, you'll understand as I bring it forward. But let's go to Daniel for a minute, and let's just read this. Chapter 3. three. Nebuchadnezzar, the, the king, made an image of gold. The king made an image of gold, and it was nine feet tall. Now, we don't actually know, no one actually knows what, whether the image was the image of Nebuchadnezzar or what it was. Nobody really knows. Some think it was him. Some think it was, some think it was just an image of like a god. But whatever it was, they were commanded to bow to it every time they heard music. They were to bow to it. Nebuchadnezzar said, and anyone who does not bow to, to all the kinds of music, and you are to fall down and worship the golden image that Nebuchadnezzar, and I'm in verse 5, the king has set up. So here he has an image, whether it be of himself or whatever it is, it's a golden image. And when you hear the music, everybody under his authority was to bow in his kingdom was to bow and worship this. But I love what they said. But if God chooses not, let it be known to you, O king, that we are not going to serve your gods or worship your golden image. Oh, I love it. So he is so angry, he says, by giving orders to heat the furnace seven times more than it usually heated. Now look at verse 20, interesting. He commanded certain valiant warriors. Did you ever see that before? He commanded his valiant, valiant warriors, certain ones that he knew were ex had expertise in fighting. These were strong men that were in, did battle. They were warriors. He commands those men that were in his army to tie up these three Hebrew children. Why? Did they show any acts of violence? Were they ready to fight? Why these? I believe you see a picture here of demonic spirits, what the enemy sends against you when you make a proclamation that you will not bow to Satan and his demons. I'm telling you, this is what the enemy does. He finds his three or whatever they are, the strongest in his army, to send to you to get you defeated so you will not believe what God has and to tie you up. The tying up is what you're focusing on. If you're focusing on the negative, that is what's tying you up. And it's sent by demonic spirits to know exactly where to tie you and tie me up. So he, the, the furnace is seven times harder, hotter. God was already in that furnace. He was already in it. He didn't just appear when the three men were thrown in. He was already in there because as soon as they... You know, I, I see it in my mind. It wasn't, it was like it was an open pit or something. And they're standing there as they, they take the three Hebrew children and they throw them in. When they get closer to the fire, the fire is so hot. <laughs> I love it. The fire is so hot where God is. The fire is so hot because God is a consuming fire. Where God is, the fire is so hot that when the enemy goes to put his hands on you to do damage, he is immediately confronted with the living God. And your hands get loose. And the demonic realm gets captured. Oh. <laughs> These men were tied up in their trousers, their coats, their caps, their clothes, and were cast into the midst of the furnace of a blazing fire. For this reason, because the king's command was urgent and the furnace had been made extremely hot, the flame of the fire slew, yes, those who carried Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Just slew them. The, the flame was so hot, so intense. See, that's why you got to stay close with your confession. You know, I, I'm telling you, 
Craig will say to me, Fran, that's negative. You're speaking negative. You're speaking, don't speak that stuff. You know, we all get caught in negative talk because we're looking at this instead of this. You know? And, and I'm so thankful for people in my life, and you need people in your life that will say, that's negative. You need to change your confession. Or stop somebody and say, I don't want to hear that. Just, I don't want to hear it. And so these three men fell into the midst of the furnace, the blazing fire, still tied up. The Nebuchadnezzar, the king, was astounded, stood up in haste, and he said to his high officials, was there not three men in there? I see one walking around. And look what he says. <laughs> and the appearance of the fourth is like the son of the gods. What did he see? What did he see walking around in the mist? Here you have three men thrown in a fire, doesn't touch them, doesn't singe their clothes. They don't smell like smoke. And the Bible tells us the only thing that was burnt was that that was tied on their hands. Yeah, the, the ninth letter of the Hebrew alphabet is the letter Tate, which also has the value of nine. When you look at the pictograph for Tate, it will readily see that it looks like a snake that is coiled inside a basket. When you see it in the classical Hebrew script, you will notice that it is constructed of Va and, and Zion, the two preceding letters. They are joined and somewhat resemble a snake. So now you have six and seven joined with nine. Six is man. Seven is God's perfect number, and nine is Tate. And that, Tate, is a very interesting number. Now, Tate can be pictured either the man, because you have Va, and Va is the number six, and it means man. So you have parts of Tate, you have parts of Va, you have parts of Zion, Zion. And as we see, the letter Tate can picture either the man that is rebellion before the Lord or that is surrendered to him. Look at the evil side. You will see that there is the crown, which is the head. At the bottom is the serpent's tail coming around for evil. If you look on the good side, you see Zion. Zion. You see the crown. The, the long piece that comes down is the va, and it's connected with a man either bowing to evil or a man that's going to bow to truth or to the crown man, which is the sword, the sword of the spirit. It's man bowed in submission or man bowed in rebellion. That's what's going to happen in 2009. And I am telling you this, I am telling you this, I am telling you this, in 2009, our deeds will be recognized. Just as we went through those gates and we saw that our faith needed to be stretched or revealed what was not revealed where it was not. In 2009, we we're going to have an opportunity to see our own selves, what we are made of. We will either bow in submission to the Spirit of God throughout 2009 with its struggles, or we will bow to the enemy, or let me put it this way, to the desires of your flesh. Your flesh will be in control. When a man vow is bowed before the crown man, Zion, taken upon him his yoke, or chet is yoke, then his soul is subject to the discipline of the Lord, and the fruit of the Spirit will grow in his life. This man will die to himself and all that is outside of the yoke of Christ. If a man bows in the good, then actually he will be subject to the discipline of the Lord. Now, all of us understand that you have to be disciplined by the Lord. If you're God's child, you will be disciplined. If there is no correction in your life, if you get away with doing the things that are contrary to the word of God and you're not chastised for it, you need to ask God where you are in relationship with him. You see, your heart could become so cold that God will leave you alone. There will be no discipline in your life. I have said this over and over again. I don't care. Let God speak to me in discipline and, and praise and, and reproof. Whatever. I want to hear God's voice. And I don't want to have somebody else come to me and say, you did this wrong. I want the Holy Spirit to immediately correct me when I do something wrong. 